Well, I've lived in this community since uh, 1954, more longer than most of you, I think. And uh, uh, so, and I've driven across this bridge many times. Actually, uh, had an accident in that bridge one day. I think we we're going to Jackson's with a uh, 4-H, and somebody pulled on the bridge when I was on it with a stock trailer and took out the front wheel in his car, not not our stock trailer. We were a little bit late. I was late anyhow. So, uh, without any uh, more, uh, I won't uh, say anything else. We'll just call on uh, people to stand up and uh, speak their mind on their opinions. Hi, I'm Don Bovet. I'm in Carawatta County. I've been in this area all my life. And this little hall right here, that bridge, is part of my heritage. And I feel like this not only is a safety issue, but we've talked about farmers that have to travel back and forth with their equipment to work up in the north end when they live south. That kind of stuff can be a bottleneck for them. And the safety issue as well, that the people brought up already. But also, it's our heritage. We just started Cowboy Church here last night, and it's going to be a little inconvenient to drive all the way around to come back to Cowboy Church here, or any views that are going on here in Gaines River. So, just want to put in my two bits on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe years. A lot of water has run under that old bridge uh, <laughs> since I've been here. But anyway, uh, that bridge hasn't really cost uh, cost us a lot of money. I think it was about 55 years ago that that bridge washed out the north side. Yeah. I was just a kid then. So was I. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since then, you know, don't think the bridge has cost uh, very little money. And uh, I'd like to see a little bit of money spent on it now and keep it there for like the rest of the speakers were saying, it's a it's a safety thing, like emergency vehicles or anything to get to the hospital. The hospital's right at the end of the road, uh, going into Sundry, and uh, you know, for the ambulance to uh, go back out and come back in, you know, or any any emergency, and for the farmers too, the bail wagons and stuff. I live just off Highway 22, and that's a very dangerous intersection as far as uh, traffic, uh, slow traffic getting out there. But anyway, that's about all I've got to say. Thanks. The bridge isn't going to close. How's that? I'm going to tell you what. I'm not a farmer in LA, and I'm going to tell you exactly how I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to step on the county's toes. This is a county issue, and I've been watching from the sideline, but the bridge is not going to close. And I'm going to tell you why. You remember when the Garrington Bridge was damaged and it was, it was way back in the order of things to be fixed. I started getting letters on this. It's real simple. I stood up in the legislature and what I asked of the energy minister is start issuing closure to all the wells around this area. This is a safety route depending on, you can't come up with the scenarios, how many different scenarios there are here that you have to evacuate by. In other words, you only have a couple of bridges, and all these bridges are part of evacuations. We drew a line all the way around the circumference around the Garrington Bridge that I believe took in this facility right up here on the hill. And what we said is start closing them down or start fixing the bridge. They went right to work and fixed the bridge. The same goes for here. Now this is a lot less money compared to the Garrington Bridge, I can tell you that. It come, now I'm not going to get into the battle at the moment if the county's sending a message to the province. So I'm trying to send a message to the province too. Uh, but the fact of the matter is simply this. You gotta, if you're willing to stand up, if you're willing to stand up, I will tell you this, if they try to close the bridge, we're gonna go to have them start shutting in the wells and start shutting down facilities. The cost of those alone are worth about 10 or 20 bridges. I will guarantee you the money will be found, but you have to be able to be sticking together Going to the county uh, as a group is a smart idea, uh, but I will tell you this, I will bring this up in the legislature on Mar March 10th. 
What are we going to do for the for the escape routes, for dealing with the evacuations? And I believe when I looked at the, the bridge over here, I counted six or seven sour gas wells. So who in here has a sour gas well on their property? Is anybody? I do. Okay, well, I guess I got more than six or seven. Guess what? That bridge isn't closing. It's just not closing. That's it. Otherwise, these wells have to shut in. And these, you're going to shut in wells at this time and this time in the economy? That's got to be the dumbest idea I can ever think of, to be perfectly honest. So when I came down here, I was trying to think. It's like you're going through a lot of angst about this bridge. I know the county is trying to figure out. And I'm going to tell you, they're not the only county. Every county is pissed at the government. What the government did was pull all the funding for all the bridges province-wide and just said, told the counties, you've got to do it. That's what they did. So the counties are sort of caught in the, in the, in the background here of trying to figure out what their priorities are. But our priorities are to keep our economy going. That's got to be the priority. This bridge is absolutely necessary for evacuation so this thing can function. When I say this thing, our economy. So this is actually, to me, this is almost a moot point. But what we have to do and what you need to do is stick together. And I will tell you this, if it comes down to it, I'll bring you all up to the legislature. And I'll have you all up in the rafters and then we'll go right after the premier. We can't shut this bridge. We need these wells producing. We need this facility working. This is insane. He has that $4.2 million worth of staff to keep us up, though. <laughs> good point. Maybe we can lower all the staff. Five percent cut, though. It should be good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The water. Environmentally, now we're going to get really nitpicky. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to spend, I don't know how much, to remove that bridge, right? Yep. Then you're going to have to fix those banks because we do, we have, like Stu said, we have a lot of elderly, elderly people in this area that have been here for 40, 50, 60 years. That I just to say, one day they could come down here and just totally forget that there's no bridge. <laughs> that happens. Happens. What are you going to do? Another thing about the Garrington Bridge. When is the uh, provincial government going to get around to taking that sign off? Yeah. <laughs> as, as soon as you vote them out. <laughs> it did not. I gave it a good faith effort, and what they told me was cross the floor right now, and I said no, I'd rather lose by one vote. I know, I volunteered for you for a while, Lou. And what happens with the children that are on that bus on 22 when they could be safe on this? Like, there's just, just because there's all of us would like to use it, there's other reasons that we don't want to see it gone. And environmentally, you have to be responsible. Just like all the farmers here I have made to be. that note. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> a question about uh, the, uh, the money to uh, bring the bridge uh, up to a level 296 or whatever it was. Uh, is that a one time or what's, what's the yearly maintenance on that bridge cost? Do you have any? Well, since 2005 up until 14. Those railroad ties came off the original fence. <laughs> From 2005, and this is not nothing to do with the flood, but 2005, up to here, up, well, in, in 2008, in three years, we put $636,389 in. 53 cents into the bridge. <laughs> How much is that is on consultation deeds and things like that? How much is it at on actual work? How much is it paying firms to look at it? I, I, I can't tell you what the yeah. engineers yeah. Yeah, That's where all the money is going is onto the consultation what, on an actual work being done on any of this stuff. What we see is the planking, you know, and yep. uh, that's a, a day, maybe a two day job, and that's, that's, that's what we see, so we don't really know where the Seems like a lot of money for that. Going into studies. You first. You haven't spoke yet. I have one question. I'm, my name's Tom King, and it's, it's for Joe Anglin. I'm curious how the province decided to just quit funding. Um, I don't know if it's the rural infrastructure as far as bridges go, or if it's the entire province. Um, 
like municipalities, big cities, was the province's decision to stop funding infrastructure, which includes bridges in province. What was their reasoning for that? And is there no recourse as taxpayers to say, I'm sorry, but that's not acceptable? When these bridges are really important to not only this bridge, but so many others, Joe. I can't give the exact history on when they pulled the funding. Earl might be able to do better at that, because I was a council, town councillor at the time. And I remember dealing with the county saying, hey, wait a minute, they just pulled out funding for the bridges. I do know that the rural MLAs, particularly those who sat on county councils, are working with the province on this. The sad part is, and, it, and this is the sad part, is the provincial government works on pressure, always does, always will, which is the number of voters. That's really it. That's what it comes down to. How much pressure that the uh, AAMD and C, which is your county council organization, can bring to bear on the provincial government to come back and fund this again. It has not worked so far. It's still under negotiation, and they are working. I do, and I think we got a meeting coming up. What in uh, soon? Soon. Yeah, uh, not sure. I think it's April, um, but we'll probably be in election by that time. <laughs> That's, I'm getting right to your last question. What can we do? There's an election coming up. There's an election coming up. And you people need to start thinking about voicing your opinion. That's really it. And if you voice your opinion as a group, you get heard louder as a group. That's really it. That's how you make any government move. Uh, politicians don't want to tell you this, but they all count votes almost on every decision. That's exactly what they do. So if you stick together, that's why when I first got up, I said, if you're willing to stick together, if you're willing to make a statement, you don't have to fill out a form. Like I said, I'd bring you all up to the legislature. We'll flood the upstairs. I'll point you all out one by one. And I will tell you, the province gets nervous when things start grumbling. And that's where they get involved. To me, this argument is so winnable because I want it on the Garrington Bridge. And I understand this is the county's issue, and I understand that, and I'm not sure of the politics with the county, because I don't get involved, but if they're trying to send a message to the province, I know there's other counties doing the same thing, if that's what they're doing. But in the end, the argument was made right there by the door. It makes no economic sense to shut this bridge down. It just does not. To, uh, now, this is probably not the greatest muster point, given its low point. I think I heard somebody say that. I saw that when I came down the hill for the first time. It's like, whoa. I looked at the, you know, but I will tell you this, it's a, it is an evacuation route. You cannot get around that. We've got more questions, Joe. Yeah. Real quick, make one last point. I guess my point is this, is that when you really, we think of it going south to Sundry, but you know, it's also for Sundry getting out of Sundry. Now, we've had two yeah. floods in the last 10 years. Those are mechanical events. They aren't 100 year floods because they haven't been as massive as they should be. So I guess the thing is, because we had two of them, right? So we know it's a decadal. So I guess what I would say is that really we should be looking different than this. We shouldn't be thinking about just replacing this bridge or building a new bridge, the same specs or whatever else. We should be thinking that all those people in Sundry are vulnerable because the Sundry Bridge was closed during 2005. This bridge over here was closed. This bridge was washed out. The Garrington Bridge was closed. They were isolated completely. That's a brutal thing. Lots of bridges in the West Country were out. So what I would say to Mr. Anglin is that the province is going to do this and if we're going to do it, we might as well do it right. And we do it so that we have a bridge that can withstand a 100-year flood so the people from Sunday can get out of there because otherwise you're going to have to have all the residents in this area south of the James River and east of, or I should say west of the Red Deer River, they're, they're going to be stranded. And basically we're going to have to take all the people of Sunday if all of that gets flooded, the police station, the hospital, the old folks home, all of that stuff. I don't like to think about it, but I love this community. I depend on this community. My family depends on this community. Let's we'll spend some money. We're one of the richest jurisdictions in, in Canada, right, with the amount of GDP we produce. Let's, let's do something here, and let's get a good bridge for a 100-year flood, and we don't have to worry. We fix this one, I mean, a 100-year bridge over here or something, but we need something because that's billions of dollars. We can't be responding after the fact, like High River, like, like other places. We've got to do it now, be proactive, because this is our bread and butter, like Joe said, like other people good, said. Good, good point. Okay, sorry, it took so long. I tried to get it. Thank you. Yes, you haven't spoken. Yeah, my name is Robert Dutton. I've lived in the community for quite a few years and do use the bridge. Uh, 
my uh, thought is that there's no shortage of money and I kind of like the idea of a county being responsible for the things that are in their county and giving us more control over how our money is spent. As it gets up to help, uh, Edmonton and like that, we get so far away from it, there is no local control over anything. <coughs> it's hard enough to get in to see the councilors in the county here, as the lady said. <coughs> so I think that this is a real good opportunity to, to have our county be accountable for the money that they do spend. Like I was amazed to hear that they spent 600 thousand yes. on the bridge in like three years and uh, you know where's that money go uh, to repair it to where we could use it? it's half that much you know but uh, anyway uh, that's why like I hope they take it from this meeting that we don't want um, to take the control away from the people mm -hmm. yeah I'm not too sure about all that money. stuff we can keep an eye on how they spend money better here, and it's really hard to do that even with that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> now, there's, I guess, uh, I think we're at the, at the point where we can, do you want to break for coffee, or do you want to come up with some sort of a recommendation to the county? Judy? I think they've been making notes all along. Okay. They've gotten the, uh, the community. I, I think it's pretty unanimous. I'm not going to say unanimous, because I don't know for sure. But it, I think most people here uh, would say that we do not want the bridge closed. Uh, and if, if you do want the bridge closed, I dare you to stand up. <laughs> oh. And I just uh, want to encourage you to get active and get organized and go to the county council meetings uh, with a presentation. It is not really that difficult, and I'm sorry that you might have been scared off because all I've ever done when we wanted to make a presentation is phone in and ask, could we be put on the agenda for such and such a date? And we've always been welcome to do that. The thing that I would encourage you to do is really get very organized and have specific people presenting on specific topics. And if you can do a PowerPoint <laughs> presentation, that would be even better. You know, show some scenes, provide statistics, everything like that on a PowerPoint presentation. And the other thing is make sure that everybody knows when you're doing it so that you could pack the county office with your supporters. And uh, I think that's the route to go. I think that's very good, uh, very good advice. And we can count on your support. Caroline Rocky Way Theater, it's even close. Yeah, that's that's true. Maybe we should have a cover over it and become a, well, a historical <laughs> site. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, the requirement is for a historical site, but it's... But, it, you know, that's a possibility, wouldn't it be? The historical James River Bridge. <laughs> historical or histrionic? Uh, you got some stories you can tell what's happened underneath the James River Bridge? <laughs> else you want to come out of this so uh, if nobody's got anything else to say I think coffee's ready and there's